Yeah, John, uh, you said you said you've been down to to three pin hitters before. What uh, what years were you down to three pins and one? And what was the situation in those years? Uh, just uh, I think 2006 might have been one. Um, uh, I mean, there were other years that you just you know it's injuries or they're out. For, you know, people are out for a while. So, uh, but yeah, it's. You know, but we knew we were a little thin going into, you know, with Capri leaving really hurt us, uh, you know, the timing of that and everything. So, uh, um, you know, it's hard to make that up when somebody leaves. And so that made us thin and, and uh, you know, so but we, we'll survive. Do you, uh, do you change how you train or anything when considering you're down to three? No. They just give more reps. How have the uh, freshmen been integrated, the new freshmen been integrating themselves into practice and are they more vital now that you're getting, you're a little bit lower on bodies? Well, they've been involved in everything. We get them involved as much as we can. There's a few times where they're standing out, uh, but uh, um, I think they're getting great work. It's great for them. They're, they, they provide us, you know, uh, depth on the B side. So, uh, and, and those guys can bring it. I mean, they're, they're good. And um, so it's not like there's a very big drop off over there. So it's, it's nice, because uh, I think we can get some great game-like situations and practice with them. Hey, John Kelly, Jeff Field was tweeting about uh, expanding the field back to 64 teams just from watching all the NCAA tournament stuff. Just curious if you had any comment on, on that. And do you think it's a good idea? I totally agree with him. I think it's ridiculous. We're at 48. It's, it's, uh, you know, basketball didn't cut back. Why are we cutting back? You know, football didn't cut back. Why are we cutting back? Especially the fact that it's all in one place. I mean, you're really looking at 16 more teams, uh, and uh, it's all going to be in one place anyway, so they can make that adjustment. But, you know, the NCAA is under a lot of fire right now, especially with women's sports. Uh, they're going to pay a big price, I think. This would be one way they could, uh, you know, start showing that women's sports are important. But I think they lump volleyball in with other sports that they're trying to limit the championships. But the fact we've gone all to one place saves money. It's, it's to me, it's a no-brainer. So I'm glad he tweeted something about it, and uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe they'll listen. They, they don't listen to me, so I, it's no point in me saying anything. Nearing the end of the, the scheduled season here, um, have, do you anticipate any makeup matches, or do you think you're just going to end with the, the the 18 you've got scheduled right now? Nope. I, I don't. I don't. It's it's really hard. I you know it's, uh, I know there's a couple teams trying to make up, but that's like a Illinois Northwestern and Northwestern Wisconsin. Uh, that they could do it on a Tuesday night. You know, for us, we're so far away from everybody. Iowa's the closest, but we just played them. You know, uh, Minnesota would be the next closest, but I mean, they're they don't have everybody back yet. So uh, I don't. For us, it's logistically really tough. You played the yeah the Wednesday Saturday matches last week. This week you got the Thursday Friday. And how do you adjust your practice schedule to prepare for this week? Um, we just, uh, do it like we do a normal Wednesday, Saturday, uh, except we're going to play two matches. So we'll, we'll just, it's a shorter week. We get a little more done on Mondays. And, uh, so, uh, I'm more worried about next weekend. What do we do? <laughs> Got two days off. Can't, you know, can't give them two days off. Otherwise they, they forget how to play and their bodies forget how to move. John, with a couple weeks left in the regular season, uh, you know, when this finishes Big Ten wise, there's going to be a discrepancy in how many matches some teams have played. How do you feel like a conference champion should be determined, uh, given the fact that uh, some schools will have uh, considerably more matches than others? There, there's some formula in place. I haven't even looked at it, but the bottom line is there's no way there can be a true uh, fair champion this year with all the cancellations, who's played who, 
uh, it's there's just no way. So uh, whatever you know, whoever's going to have the best record will win it. Uh, great. So let's move on and and get as many teams in the tournament as we can. Uh, but it's been such a weird year. I, I just you know I don't I don't think there's any way you you can say that you know, that, that that team really earned it. Um, but again, it's that's the way it's going to be. And uh, you, you know I think everybody's just happy we get to play and and have a shot to play and. You know, uh, again, try to get as many Big Ten teams to the tournament as we can. Is it odd going to the last couple of weeks and not having the Big Ten championship be a focus that driving your players? Or is, I mean, what is the focus right now heading into the last couple of weeks of matches? Uh, the focus is uh, where it's been all along. It's day by day. We're, we're focused today on is everybody going to get test negative? <laughs> is everybody going to be a practice? Uh, you know, we, we had some contact tracing issues, so uh, you're just, you know, I just look at today. You know, what, what can we get done today? How do we keep it moving? Uh, who's going to be here? And here we go. Have Haley or Emma been back in practice yet, or what, when do you expect them to be back? We hope, we're hoping they're back today. But we're, we're trying to follow the strictest protocols and being as safe as we can uh, with all this. Uh, just because we've seen what's happened with Michigan, Michigan State, our, our men's basketball team, you know, once it gets going and if it's one of these new variants, you know, it can wipe out the whole team. So uh, that's, we're just trying to be really as careful as we can. Has your uh, has your serving improved this season like you like you'd hoped it would? The numbers are better than last year. Yes. And I, and the, how we grade it, how we how we do it. So uh, we uh, um, we feel like we've made an improvement there. Yeah. What what servers have impressed you the most this season? Uh, well, our two weakest last year were Maddie and Kenzie. They both have upgraded big time. Uh, they're putting up some pretty good numbers. Uh, close to where we want him to be. I think Kenzie's a little ahead of goal. Maddie's real close. Lexi's always, you know, very, very dangerous server, especially if she gets hot. Um, Nicklin's a great server. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, we gave Lauren an opportunity. She missed a few, but we scored really well in her rotation serving. You know, so she's got a great serve uh, when she believes in it. So. I just think, you know, we're trying to put six grade servers out there, and uh, that's, uh, you know, so you pressure teams every rotation. But uh, they worked hard on it, we work hard on it, and it's, you know, it's a huge priority for us. You mentioned what, uh, what serving rotation do you score the most points in right now? Um, right now, it's uh, on, the, on the year. Uh, typically, it's uh, been, uh, rotation four with Keone Lay, uh, and uh, probably rotation two with Lexi. And then we've been at times we've had some, uh, I can't remember total wise, but we've had some big nights with in rotation five with Maddie Servin. You mentioned the freshman, um, kind of the weak points last year, and talk about Keone Lay there. How, how has she done relative to your expectations coming in here as a server back there? Well, uh, for a freshman, she's doing great. She brings it. She competes. You know, that kid's fearless. Love her. You know, and she's, she's, you know, there's been some matches that we would have given her MVP if we had one. So love what she's doing. John, how do you describe uh, the improvement Nicklin has made? Her, her, her assist numbers are uh, considerably better this year. Do you know exactly what she's done differently or what part of her training has allowed her to have better success this year? I just think um, I mean, that's a complicated question to answer on a press conference. Uh, I just think Tyler's built up some confidence in her. We've, we've tried to make her more of a creative setter uh, that's just not super patterned and you know, makes the easy set. So I just think she's gotten more confident. She's been more creative. Um, and, you know, they, they uh, every day in setter training, they play Michael Jackson music because, you know, he he's, was very creative in his uh, show business. And uh, we're, we're trying to, 
Tyler's done a great job of, you know, getting her to, to get outside the box a little bit. So I just think there's a confidence in, in doing that. Michael Jackson music, John? I mean, are we just going through the best hits, or what, what songs are we playing? Yeah, I, I don't know. I hear the same songs every day. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he was one of the best creators of all time. Coach, will you talk about the middle competition and what you're looking at during practice to decide who's starting? Um, there's a lot of things we look at. Uh, it's, you know, and we, we stat every practice so we know what their hitting numbers are and what their blocking numbers are. And um, so that's kind of how we go. It's very, very close. You know, all those guys are doing a really, really good job. Well, what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts on that pro league going on in Dallas and, and how that's looked to you? Well, I think it's great that we're trying pro, pro volleyball in the United States. Uh, the format for me is really hard to follow. The teams are really hard to follow. I mean, it's hard to get connected. I can only get connected to either Jordan's team or Kelly's team. The other teams, it's like half the time you don't even know who's on the team because they're, you know, the announcers are talking about, you know, some movement or, you know, some something that their players are involved in. So, uh, uh, but I think, I think they're having fun. Uh, I think it's good for women's sports uh, to, to make a shot at this. But, uh, you know, the timing right now is not great for us. You know, I don't, I don't have a lot of free time to, to watch it. But uh, it's good to hear Kelly's reports. And, um, but I think the level of play is pretty good for, you know, some of these guys haven't been playing and just came in there and, and so the level of play has been pretty good. What uh, what position from from college to to that pro league? Which which position where is the talent and the skill level a lot greater from college to pro? Well, I think you know what wins in that league is uh, being able to kill the ball. So I think the block and defense, you know, because they don't they're not training that much. Uh, so I think it's you get people that can kill the ball. It's e pretty easy to kill the ball, uh, just because the, the blocking defense isn't going to be highly trained, or you know, I don't think there's going to be great schemes or anything, because the teams change every week. So, so it's you know you don't really have a scouting report. So I just think you got to have people that can terminate the ball, and and somebody that can pass it to get the setter that can, you know. So you know those big those big hitters are the ones that are the captains and. And uh, so that was transferred the most. Um, the other thing is, you know, I don't think you see a lot of missed serves because they get penalized. They get basically they get fined if they miss a serve or they get points deducted. So it costs them money. So I'm trying to figure out a way to implement that in our gym. If we could take money out of their checks uh, when they miss serves. Uh, in Michigan, um, kind of looking at their numbers, they're up there on kills and aces. What do you expect to see from the Wolverines this week? They're, they've got some really great hitters. Uh, they're a very good team. And again, they've been hit hard by COVID. So they've been in, out, in, out, which is really, really hard. So uh, it's, uh, they're very good. We're, we got, you know, just, we got to look at this as the toughest weekend of the year coming up. All right, everybody, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you. Okay, thanks.